Welcome to Westminster Presbyterian Theological Seminary series of podcasts on church history. Perhaps, and perhaps even probably, the most significant figure in relation to the Christian church in the 18th century was Jonathan Edwards, still widely regarded as the greatest theologian philosopher ever to have been produced by America. Edwards was born in 1703, dies 1758. Son of a faithful gospel minister, Timothy, he became noted and known when he joined his grandfather Solomon Stoddard in the significant church in Northampton, Massachusetts. Soon after, Edwards became the sole pastor after the death of his grandfather. And over the next years, Edwards, at the forefront of the mighty acts of God in the mid-1730s and then in the early years of the 1740s, Edwards was seen to be in the forefront of that theological, pastoral, commitment to ministry that was a hallmark of the Puritan era a century or so before. Edwards was noted for many, many things, but one of his most enduring legacies to the church has been his writings, and in particular perhaps his writings that address the very heart of what the Christian faith is. Perhaps his most accessible and perhaps even his most enduring work is his work on the religious affections. What Edwards writes in this volume is as relevant to the church in the 21st century as it was when first written in the middle years of the 18th century. We live today in an age of evangelical declension, uh, theological and moral, and the religious affections confront us with authentic biblical religion and summon us to recenter the believing life and the life of the church in the grace and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. The great truth that Edward seeks to establish and explain is, as he writes almost at the very outset of his work, that true religion in great part consists in holy affections. Now it would be a huge mistake to think that Edwards was dismissing in any way or even disparaging the role of the intellect in true religion. Nothing could be further from the truth. Edwards well understood that God's saving truth addresses the whole man and the whole woman through their minds. But what he was deeply concerned to emphasise was that the reception of saving truth not only transforms a believer's thinking, it no less transforms and redirects their affections. A text that is very uh, precious to Edwards is 1 Peter 2 7 to you who believe he is precious. For Edwards true religion as distinct from false or counterfeit religion is authenticated not ultimately by mental assent to truth however orthodox and evangelical but by holy affections. Now the qualifier holy is significant. Holy affections are affections that are the fruit of the Holy Spirit uniting the believer to Jesus Christ. They are the overflow of a life savingly invaded by the grace of God in Jesus Christ. Edwards was only too conscious in his own day that there were those in the church who said, Lord, Lord, but who did not live lives that gave any credibility to their Christian profession. His treatise is an attempt to describe, if not define, the nature of true, that is, biblical, God-honouring religion. 
God's honour requires it. The eternal good of sinners necessitates it. The background to Edward's treatise was the remarkable revivals or awakenings that had marked New England, in particular in the middle years of the 1730s and the early years of the 1740s. Similar revivals had touched parts of Scotland at the same time, most notably in Kilsyth and Cambus Lang. Through his correspondence, in particular, with, in particular with James Robe, minister at Kilsyth, and William McCulloch, minister at Cambus Lang, Edwards was well aware of the dramatic events that so transformed for a time these two small towns on the outskirts of Glasgow. It's very striking that Edwards in far off New England knows what's going on in the central belt of Scotland. In a letter to James Robe, Edwards reveals his biblically sane approach to the dramatic experiences that marked both the revivals in Scotland and in New England. He wrote, Many among us have been ready to think that all high raptures are divine. But experience plainly shows that it is not the degree of rapture and ecstasy though it should be to the third heavens, but the nature and kind that must determine us in their favour. Earlier in that same letter, Edwards reports to Robe, quote, there is a great decay of the work of God among us, especially as to the awakening and converting influence of the Spirit of God. And the prejudices there are, in a great part of the country, riveted and inveterate. The people are divided into two parties, those that favour the work and those that are against it. And the distinction has long been growing more and more visible. Continues Edwards, this is very much owing to imprudent management in the friends of the work and a corrupt nature which Satan has found means to introduce, and our manifold sinful errors by which we have grieved and quenched the Holy Spirit. So Edward's work on the religious affections is in part then an attempt both to justify the revivals as authentic, genuine works of God, but also to subject the revivals to a reasonable and reasoned biblical critique. Edwards well understood that all that glitters is not necessarily gold. The Religious Affections was written against a background of controversy initiated in the main by a Boston minister, Charles Chauncey. Now Chauncey, who later taught universal salvation, was especially aggrieved by and opposed to the the often extreme physical effects produced in some people awakened to their need of salvation through the preaching of men like Edwards and George Whitfield. Chauncey believed Christianity was calm, reasonable, careful, unenthusiastic. He acknowledged, at least initially, that awakened sinners might experience a measure of spiritual address. However, what he saw and heard in the 1742 Great Awakening deeply alarmed him. Chauncey wrote, "'Tis scarce imaginable what excesses and extravagances people were running into and even encouraged in. In the evening there is a screaming and shrieking to the greatest degree, and the persons thus affected are generally children, young people and women." Now, Edwards does not dismiss out of hand Chauncey's criticisms of the revivals. He knew there had been experiential excesses. He understood that God's, from God's word that religious experiences could be dramatic, ecstatic and spiritual and yet be false. In every genuine work of God, Edwards well understood Satan is active, seeking to discredit, mock and oppose In his letter to James Robe, Edwards acknowledges 
It would have been better for us if all ministers here had taken care diligently to distinguish such joys and raised affections as were in, attended with deep humiliation, brokenness of heart, poverty of spirit, mourning for sin, solemnity of spirit, a trembling reverence towards God, tenderness of spirit, self-jealousy and fear and great engagedness of heart after holiness of life and a readiness to esteem others better than themselves. In our next podcast, we will continue to reflect on this great word of Edwards entitled The Religious Affections. <laughs>